Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Toast and Happy Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. It doesn't feel like a Friday because the banks gave us Monday. It really does not feel like a Friday. Because the week was so short. And so full of joy and excitement to be back in the saddle with my girl, Jax. It's true, but it is Friday nonetheless. The days of the week continue on. And that's really exciting. We made it through the first week of the new year, I think pretty painlessly. Yeah. And it felt like a good week. I'm really excited for everyone that we've reached this milestone. Congrats. Congratulations. Um, it doesn't really feel like a Friday for me because right after this, like I'm not headed into the weekend. Like I'm headed into straight travel mode. I'm going to LA right after this. Actually, I actually have like a huge update on like my West Coast but trip. But you're like going to party in, in LA. Like I feel like that's exactly a weekend feeling. Like you're hopping on a flight. You're going to a new city. Like you're going to parties. No, for sure. But like getting on a plane for six hours is not like weekend relaxation Friday afternoon vibes, you know? It's getting you to your fun filled weekend. Yeah, no, and my weekend, like, of course, everything being planned so last minute. Um, but I, I've made a, I've made a decision, and I, I need the toaster's help. I need your help. What is it? So, you know, I was telling everyone, that's why I'm wearing red today, um, to show support for my favorite team, the 49ers. I'm headed to the West Coast, and I've been meaning to get out to a 49ers game just to see, see my guys, you know? Ugh, I sound like one of those girls. Um... And so there's a game this Sunday and me and Ben were planning on going. And then me and Ben were talking yesterday. And this, is, this game on Sunday is the last game before the playoffs. The 49ers have already cinched a seat. So they're, whether they win or lose this game, it doesn't matter. The next week is a playoff game. So I'm still going to be on the West Coast next week. And me and Ben were like, we should really just go next week. So we've made the decision to not go to the 49ers game this Sunday, but next weekend um but there's a chance because i was learning so much about football last night so there's a chance that based on the games that happened this weekend that there might not be a 49ers game next weekend it's called a bye weekend the person who's in the number one seat seed seat i don't know gets a break it's called a bye week before the playoffs so if the eagles lose to the cowboys this sunday then I will have missed my opportunity to go to a game. Now, I, I discussed with a couple football experts and they said the likelihood of the Eagles losing to the Cowboys is extremely unlikely, but that's the nature of the game. It's like, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, that's why there is so, a game to find out. Right, right. So I'm taking a risk for sure. Are you asking me my opinion? I wasn't, but I would but you li accept no, it nonetheless. You literally said like, I need everyone's help. Jax, I need your help. That's what you said at the beginning. Yeah, I, in help, I was more so just like setting out positive vibes to the Eagles. Oh, I can't though. I'm like, cause we, cause I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. Are they playing the, but they're playing the Giants. You just have been saying the Cowboys this entire time. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> it's the Giants. But the reason I said the Cowboys, because if the Cowboys do something else, it affects it as well. But as long as the Eagles win, I'm good. Okay, I just don't, you didn't ask for my opinion, so I'm going to keep my thoughts. No, I know what you're going to say, negative queen, but go no, say I it. would go say, like, queen. one, you should go to the guaranteed game. That actually works out better for your schedule, which is this weekend. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Sure, it's not, like, the Super Bowl of games, but everyone will be relaxed. It's kind of just like, you know, a scrimmage. You know that even if they lose, they'll be happy. If they win, they'll be happy. And you're going there to hang out with happy people. Like, what if the game next week, God forbid, the Niners lose and like nobody wants to party with you after? I would go to the bird in the hand <sighs> is worth two in the seriously? bush. Like, seriously, shut up. Like, okay, <laughs> first of all, it doesn't work with my schedule this weekend. Like it was going to be really difficult for me to get to San Francisco. So if I can do like next week is so much easier for me and it's a playoff game. Like I'm going all the way. Like I should go. I should stand for something. For sure. If you are like the biggest football fan of all time. But to us, a football game, a football game is a football game. No, honestly, like seriously, shut up. Like stop. Like for real. Like because the decision's already been made. I'm going next weekend. So I know like, you know, like everyone who plays for the 49ers was like expecting to see me this weekend. So I just wanted to come on the podcast and know and like let them know like I'll be at the next game, not this one. Got it. Okay. Okay, cool. 
and I feel good about my decision. Like I'm traveling cross country. Like I need to, like, I want to go to something major. And even if we're going to win because the 49ers really at this point have never let me down. Um, and I do believe it's their time to win the playoffs. I do. It's a hundred percent their but, time. A hundred percent. But even if they don't, I still will feel like I showed support for my team at a time that matters. When they needed you. When no, they needed the me. worst case scenario here is that there's no game. Uh, then I'll be so fucking annoyed that like I missed. But you know what? Then it wasn't meant to be. But then I have to wait till next season to go to a game. I support your decision. No, I feel like the Eagles are going to pull it out. So like when your mans are watching... Um, football this weekend just make sure you root for the eagles like positive energy for the eagles and now that i've told you all this be like wow it would be so crazy if the eagles lose because then you know the 49ers get a bye weekend like you could like use all this jargon that i've learned i i did it for you guys and where do the cowboys come in such important questions um i'm, I'm not sure okay but there's an element of the Cowboys. But if the if the Eagles win, like we're good. We're good. We're good. If the Eagles win, the 49ers will be playing the Eagles. No, no. It ha I I thought the same thing, by the way. No, the no, because that would make sense. <laughs> no, yeah. No, because honestly, like I get it. I can't explain it to you. It's one of those things. Like I understand it. I couldn't verbalize it if I wanted to. Who will the 49ers be playing if there's a game next weekend? Another incredible question that I have no answers to. And the, I want to say the Jaguars. The Jaguars. It's my home state. Don't talk shit. Right. Yeah. No, I wasn't talking shit. Such a Jaguars girly. Jacksonville no, Claude. Um, Jackson Claudeville. Jacksonville Claude. <laughs> Jackson Claudeville is better. Jackson Claudeville Jaggers. We could literally so, make any team our team. Well, that's the unique ability that we have to make anything about us. Yeah, because we're just really flexible and open-minded. The New England. The Patriots. Yeah. We're Patriots. We're literally Patriots. Oh, I thought I thought we were like literally putting our names in teams. No, no, we're just finding like an association and a kinship with the team. Yeah, personally, I like the Arizona, Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> the McClurdinals. The McCurdinals. That's kind of like my favorite team, you know? Yeah, there are so many great teams. So true. I also like the White Jocks. The White Jocks and Claude. The White Jocks and are Claude, the, they're really are, good. But also the Boston Red Jocks and Claude are so good too. They're good too, and we do like red because we're also 49ers fans. Right. And that's why I'm wearing my cherry red today, ready to get my Brock on. So just send me positive vibes. Because if I fuck this up and like fumble the ball, never like actually get to go to a game this season after learning like literally everyone who plays for the 49ers, works for the 49ers, is obsessed with the toast. And like I don't even get to go to a place where everyone's obsessed with me. Like I'll be devastado. I think it will work in your favor. You're just, it's a little risky, I, but you know, you got to risk it to get the biscuit. For the biscuit. No, I, I and maybe adding to my list of resolutions, like I'm also taking risks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because, you know, I'm a very conservative girly. Like I'm usually just like, you know, go with the safe option, one in the hand, two in the bush, the whole thing. But like, why? Let's fuck up the bush. Until the bush fucks you up. Until you burn the bush down. Until you wish you took the, the one in the bush. hand. That's a lesson you got to learn the hard way. Hopefully, I feel like hopefully I'm, not this weekend. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I've got too much to we lose. Could lose. We could learn it another time. 100%. Yeah, plus we need our toast representative to go and show face, you know, shake hands, kiss babies, let the 49ers know and the people of San Francisco that we are here for them. Okay, now you're understanding like what, what I've been dealing with for the last 24 hours. <laughs> okay. No, I, I do understand what you're dealing with your weekend. It sounds so, so fun. But for me, like... The first scrimmage fake game sounds just as fun because it's just a game. No, and I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I feel like, you know, people look at us, they look at me and they think, oh, such an easy life. I'm making this look easy. Like I'm actively making it look easy. Like this is like these decisions that weigh on me. Oh my God, I could just get emotional talking about it. It's exhausting. Choices, man. Choices. Just like Audrina Patridge's book. Is that what it was called? I think so choices choices better than spare better than no choices 
so true actually like love a queen who makes choices yeah but um, I disagree about better than spare you know I think it's a strong no. title I know we there were you told me this morning that like every single story on every single website is more excerpts more drama I have respectfully asked that we not I know discuss. we won't but just take it like go to page six you don't even have to click on not you Claudia listener yeah you don't even have to click on an article even though headlines are often misleading just the volume of these headlines and also Crazy. the minutia like Harry had frostbite on his dick at his wedding like it's he's sharing ev like every thing that's ever happened to him in his life every feeling it's insane yeah it's a little um tmi a hundred percent i'm just i'm fatigued by it also because yesterday i had the pristine honor of being a guest on the good guys podcast which will come out next week and they wanted to do like a little pop culture so of course like everyone they were asking me about harry and megan i had to explain it because they like they don't get they don't know the level that we know mm -hmm. And I was just, I'm exhausted by these two. Like, I i feel like I'm just constantly learning things about them unwillingly, like against my will. I just, I think this book is a mistake. I think everything else they've put forward, it's been like, there's two sides and two camps of people mm -hmm. who like have their back and people who don't. But like, this is like crossed a line. For sure. It's more level of detail than I ever need to know about anyone's life, period period i'm so if he was a woman he'd be telling us his period cycles that's how he'd be the is. kind of influencer that's like oh not feeling the best today have my period he'd be the kind of influencer influencer yeah it's you just dropped the c yeah i dropped the c because you're the c cool oh my god um so we aren't going to be discussing that today thankfully we do have five stories we're hoping that while we record we're recording a little early today because of my flight we're hoping that we will get the sentencing from Jen Shaw because if not we have to wait till Monday which is so annoying um I actually have a friend down at the courthouse boots on the ground I'll be getting you know information as it comes in even though she had to turn her phone off but still oh uh, I'm really hoping that by the time we get to the fifth story that it'll be here it'll be but out. are you going to be actually getting it from her or no oh, okay cool that's just like she's just there just a fun fact no, she said there's a lot of cameras outside. It's crazy. The cameras will capture it. <laughs> yeah, no, it I'm sure, honestly, even if she could, like, text me as it was going on, literally the press would get it The first. people like, notification would already be in your inbox. Yeah, so I'm waiting for my people notification. This is a crazy... It's a historic day, honestly, in the Bravo universe. This is really crazy. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're all sitting here talking about Heather's black eye. I can't. I'm not. I feel good that no, I'm, I'm not. not. But, like, the but, culture like, you is. guys are. You guys are. And that's on you, because in the words of Kim Kardashian, you look like fucking clowns. We're talking about the playoffs, which is just exciting to behold. It's it's exciting. I'm kind of loving this like sports girl tomboy era that we're in. I feel like a real sports influencer. Like people are now flocking to our podcast and my Instagram being like, what does they think is gonna happen with the Eagles? Like it's just it's kind of cool to be an expert in my field. You already are, but to be an expert in another field. In another field, an additional field. A literal field. L literally. Literally. <laughs> literally. Literally. Um, so it's our final show of the week. What are your plans this weekend, Jax? Obviously, I'm going to be out gallivanting, but you're doing more important work, like raising the child of Christ. <laughs> yeah, just we'll be home chilling, mom tings, you know, maybe some crafts, some fun activities. <sighs> I do want to try and get to a car dealership maybe today. Oh, uh, exciting. Yeah, because I, I want to get a car. I don't like so I can start just like doing the things that I need to do. And I have some appointments coming up and I don't want to like be worried that Zach's going to have the car. So two questions for you. One, you know, people have been super helpful in giving you feedback for like good mom cars. Have you decided like a brand? OK, so I spoke to the car mom extensively and I told her oh. I told her my thoughts and concerns, even though they're flex. Like, oh yeah car mom and i best friends we go way back we, we had already spoken when uh zach was getting his car so now i just told her like what i was looking for um and we came up with like two good choices for me and one of them is a lexus and the other is a mm -hmm. volvo so i'm gonna go let me tell you i know the ariel charnas has a volvo yeah i'm gonna go to both dealerships i think and test drive them like at prices you know see how th they feel on the inside do my own like car mom tests for like my lifestyle and i think it will be between the two of those 
Okay, I'm really tell not. You, I'm, like, like, I'm not someone who needs to see every car on the market no. in order to make a choice. When it comes to cars, like I'm very much a label whore. So let me tell you what the label says about about you. Yeah. If you if you're interested in knowing what people are going to be thinking, Lexus, it's a little older. It's elegance. It's old money. Lexus is definitely old money. Like I like I, I don't care. You know. Yeah. Um, Volvo is so like I have brand association Volvo Ariel Charnis. Volvo for me is like fucking classy rich mom. Volvo and that's for me too. is new mo- new young mama safe driving mama. So are you looking for a mom car? Because I thought you were looking for like a punch buggy, no punch. No, bus. I'm not looking for a punch buggy. I am looking. F- I wasn't necessarily looking for a uh, mom car, even though it, it will turn into if I'm a mom and I'm driving. Like Zach's car is your mom right, car. Right, but I don't want to use it as the mom car. Like, I don't like it. So I just have to say, I like Zach's car. I, I, I really don't. Uh, so it's turned into a mom car. Plus, I do need something heavy. Like, I was saying how I wanted to be in, like, some sort of midsize sedan. Sedan. Um, which I could, like, the cars that I'm choosing are midsize sedan mom cars. That are heavy. Got it, got it. That got are it, over 3,000 pounds. Well, as your passenger princess, I have some requirements for, for what I need. Okay. Seat heaters and coolers. Okay. A bevy, bevy of cup holders. Honestly, I love a captain seat in the back. Like, I really I do. know they're though, so... Like, if you want to have a lot of kids, it's not helpful. They're really not helpful at all. Like, we're always lapping up Zach's car as captain seats. Like, it's nice when you're, like, in a car service and they have captain seats. But, like, yeah. for your actual... And sometimes, like, you want to sit next to the car seat. You want to sit in the middle seat and, like, lean over the car seat you're and play. You're losing a whole ass seat. No, but, like, you want to play... Like, have access to the car seat and play with your baby. And I'm kind of, like... I, I think captain seats are so elegant, but they're really not convenient. I'm not functional. I'm not attached to them. Okay. I, I think it's so classy and elegant, but I totally agree. It's not realistic. It's not functional. Mm-hmm. It's not necessary. I'm, a brilliant sound system so that my 100% and toast can play for Harry on his way to school or wherever he's going. You know, he's so busy. Um, I think that's it. Okay. I will let the dealer know. Are you leaning towards a color? Like black, white is so chic and very Florida. I'm less concerned about the color of the outside and more concerned about the color of the inside. Yeah, if you're going to be making content from your car, like you want like a nice espresso or like a beige. 100%. I want a nice espresso. Yeah. I mean, you're being very restrained because like I don't have a car. I've never had a car. And if the day ever came, like I'm getting a Rolls Royce. Right. No. Like I'm getting the best of the best. Yes. And I understand that for you. The only reason why it's not that for me is because I'm a new driver. So like, why would I oh. just like take money and maybe be flushing it down the toilet? No, that's that's a good point. I need something. Uh, one, like re- safe and reliable, kid tested, you know, everything. Um, but also like, it's my first car. So true. So. Okay. I'm hoping good, to, get, good to get that. Um, to get that happen this weekend. I'm hoping that when I go to the dealership and they know that I'm like going to be getting a car, they like give me one for, you know, a few days until like I get... Before yours. And then I just have so, a car starting the day I go to the dealership, you know, because sometimes they're like that. No, for sure. Like I feel as though, you know, I, even though I've never bought a car, I do feel like when you walk into the dealership, like if you agree to buy the car from them, like they're going to take care of you until you get the car. Right. And I will have a, I'll have wheels. You'll have wheels on the bus going round and round. Round, round and, and round. round, round and round. Oh my God, I forgot to tell you. What? I forgot to tell you. Remember. We have made communication with Miss Rach. In what forum? She messaged us on Instagram on the toast I responded last night Mama. that's why I called you last night and I couldn't remember why oh I called my you. god remember? work on your memory work on it I know it's so bad I just need to start leaving a pen and paper by my nightstand you do she wrote thank you guys with like a hundred hearts and smiley emojis I guess she heard us discussing her work um earlier this week on the toast and now that you know contact has been made I feel like we're one step closer to getting Miss Rach on the toast which would be such an iconic episode we'd have to like sing a song with her right yeah no, that's a, a dream guess because I think that's who our listeners want to hear from. And we all have so many questions for her. 
And it's like, yeah. what podcast is going to be the best place for Miss Rach to tell her truth other than the toast? Nowhere. You couldn't have a better match. You couldn't dream up a better collab. You really couldn't. You really could. Oh, I just saw the message. That's so, so exciting. Yeah, so kind of like big things happening at the toast, not to brag or anything. Big things for littles. <gasps> Dead. <laughs> um, so we've got a great show. Should we dive in? Sure. Still no update on Miss Jennifer Shaw, just keeping everyone in the loop. Thank you so much. Without further ado, do, 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 here are the fast five stories that you need to know. And today's episode is brought to you by Bowl and Branch. Bowl and Branch is simply everything of the sort. However you're spending the winter season, make sure you're getting your best sleep with a set of buttery soft sheets from Bowl and Branch. Made with the softest 100% organic cotton you've ever felt, it's the kind of quality you'll feel immediately. Jackie and I both have been singing the praises of Bowl and Branch, my house, Jackie's house, my guest room at Jackie's house, all Bowl and Branch. We all have the signature hemmed sheets. Um, it's their best seller and for a reason. They use the highest quality threads on earth. They're made from slow grown organic cotton for a superior softness and a better night's sleep. They have tons of positive reviews online. They're beloved even by three U.S. presidents. Um, they come in all different colors, sizes. They go from twin to California king. I have a king bed. Fits perfectly. I love they get better with every wash. It really is the time of year to like reinvest in your bed. It's winter. We're spending a lot of time at home. Get yourself a set of sheets from Bowling Branch and then also shop their accessories. Like I have a lot of pillows and throw blankets from Bowling Branch. Extremely chic and Rach Parcel approved. Make the most of bedtime with Bowl and Brand sheets. Get fifteen percent off your first set of oh, get fifteen percent off your first set of sheets when you use promo code Toast at bowlandbranch.com. That's Bowl and Branch B O L L A N D Branch.com. Promo code Toast T O A S T. I also gave Bowl and Branch um, to a few people as gifts over the holidays, and when I tell you, like, you really can't give a better gift than the gift of like sleep no. and comfort and and love and it was it was so appreciated so just a little hack if you need a gift for someone today's episode is also sponsored by thrive market our go-to for all of our grocery and household essentials and the convenience of getting it all quickly shipped to our doorsteps is a huge time saver i saw on your instagram that you just got a huge shipment from thrive market tell us about some of your favorite products i totally will i got a huge shipment from thrive market i was saying like i don't know why i got my license because i could just shop online at right. thrive market and they have literally everything they have healthy versions of so many different things i stocked up my pantry with like cooking ingredients you know how sometimes you just need like the most the random thing for a recipe and like you have to go to the store for each individual thing. Like now I am stocked for anything a recipe might call for. They have such good baby food and baby food brands. The mm -hmm. ones that I already use for Harry, they have on Thrive Market. So it just makes it so easy to get them all in one place. And of course, I mean, your girl's got to eat. I got such of tasty, course. tasty snacks. I don't know if this is your vibe, but I got um, truffle potato chips like truffle chips i would try They're it so good especially if you're having like people over you put out a bowl because it's, it's not something you can eat like you know you don't need them like regular chips but they're like so refined and tasty just that's a tip of the day yeah thrive market has like options they're not like other stores like they really have a, such a good curation of of snacks specifically and when you're a thrive market member you can save money on every single order so on average you're saving over 30 percent each time they also um are really like killing the filter game like when you are looking for something the way you can filter through products whether you're looking for like gluten-free whatever your dietary like restrictions are they make filtering down so easy and simple yeah i like to sometimes join, filter by just vegetarian that way i'm not seeing like meat products that i'm not gonna have and it's such an easy way to shop you can join thrive market today and get 30 percent off your first order plus a free 60 dollars gift when you go to thrivemarket.com slash the toast for 30 percent off your first order plus that free 60 dollars gift that's t-h-r-i-v-e market.com slash the toast thrivemarket.com slash the toast oh and it came so quickly and it comes so quickly love to see it, love to see it. oh my love god just like it. hack now i can spend my time like in the car doing something fun like perhaps getting a manicure for the first time in three months oh i got a manicure yesterday um you know, I've noticed like with your new life and being a mom and like having actually important things to do, um, you have definitely stopped your your manicure cycle. Mm -hmm. And I find the manicure cycle so 
toxic. Like, let me tell you how that's a part of motherhood I'm looking forward to. Like, not giving a fuck about my Just nails. getting off the ride and just making sure that they just, like, look nice. I stopped Clean wearing. and healthy. Like, I used to try and get a manicure down here. Like, try and get a ride. I couldn't really find, like, a manicure place that I loved. Then I, I went back to, like, doing it myself just, like, how I was doing during COVID. But, like, still they would chip and I just don't have the time to, like, be constantly thinking about, like, my chipped nails. And so now I'm just going bare. And I like it. Stunning. I could like stand Stunning. to clip my nails right now, but just keep them but clean. But you and I got just keep them clean. You and I, you and I got pedicures together when we were in Florida, and I thought that was a great nail salon. Oh What's yeah, wrong with that place? I, it was just a little far, but I agree. Yeah, and that's where I'm like dreaming of going when I'm gonna get a manicure one day. And I got a gel pedicure that time, so I won't be getting a pedicure again for one whole year. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Like with pedicures. I will not be getting a new pedicure until my white pedicure looks like a uh, French manicure. No, until the bottom of it is at the top. Exactly. Except you do need to clip your toenails if you're not going to get a pedicure. Otherwise, you'll get ingrown and your shoes won't fit. For sure. Life hack. <laughs> Holes in all your socks. Okay, our first story. Some big housewives news, though not the news that you're thinking of. Lisa Rinna is, quote, grateful as she announces her exit from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after eight seasons. After eight seasons of delivering sassy one-liners, drama-filled moments, social media messiness, and self-deprecating lip humor, Rinna is departing the beloved franchise people can exclusively confirm. She told People in a statement, quote, this is the longest job I have held in my 35-year career, and I am grateful to everyone at Bravo and all those involved in the series. It has been a fun eight-year run, and I am excited for what's to come. The decision was made as Rena's contract expired at the end of last season. After weighing her options and business obligations, she and Bravo mutually decided that she would not return to Beverly Hills. Fired. Not asked back. Not asked back. Um, this is crazy. You know, Kathy, we did it, Joe. We did it, Kathy. I think the decision for the network to like move forward the kathy's made it abundantly clear publicly and i'm sure privately too she will not be have any sort of involvement on the show if lisa rinna is still around after what went down with the whole aspen thing um and it's clear that the network is investing in kathy so i'm curious if now like if they're gonna get rid of lisa rinna who love her or hate her is like really a staple of the show and moves things around and creates drama kathy's gonna have to give us more i, I wonder if kathy's now a full-time housewife yeah, I also feel like there's a chance that it wasn't just Kathy's ultimatum that made Verna not be asked back. Like the fans really were kind of at the end of their rope with her. And I don't think it's fair to put like all the pressure. Now Kathy has to be the new Rinna and stir the pot and keep the show moving forward. No, I, I first of all, I, I didn't mean that. I just mean like she can't, you know, get by doing the bare minimum anymore if they if they really did yes. let go of Lisa yes, for her. Yes, I agree. That's how like it looks like, okay, this you want the job, now you got it. Like step up to the plate. Right. But the thing is like what Kathy's bare minimum that she was bringing to the table, like that's what people wanted from wanted. Want from Kathy. Like I actually think if we start to get more of her, though I, I do think at this point she should be a full-time housewife, but I don't think that her role it, within the girls should that change other than being just like, herself same because that's what people love about her yeah I also I I actually don't think that like the fans rage and booing her at BravoCon had anything to do with her being fired like of course it's not ideal but I think at the end of the day if I worked in like television production like I would ultimately see that as a benefit like people getting like yeah, passionately invested and everyone every show needs a villain and and I think probably Lisa Rinna's villainhood was perhaps like a she reached new levels for bravo like i don't think anyone's ever gotten booed at BravoCon. it's only um, happened like for three years but i still think it, it's good for the show yes i agree like that inspires passion but i do think like when you write yourself as the villain it's kind of a dead end I also think what what's so interesting about this is like how it affects the group dynamic in terms of Erica. I feel like Erica over the last two, three years has like really kind of pigeonholed herself with Lisa. There used to be like that core group, Kyle, Dorit, Lisa, Erica. And I feel like that's very much like dissolved. And I, I wonder what this means for Erica, like and her relationships with the other women, because she doesn't have this crutch anymore. Yeah, she's going to have to forge new friendships which ultimately might be good for her because she were they were kind of yes. siloed the two of them and like miserable together yeah so it could ultimately be good now lisa vanderpump tweeted ding dong and i think people think it's because like ding dong the witch is dead 
yeah but when i first read it i thought it was like ding dong like she's ringing the doorbell like she's showing up no okay i was open to different interpretations but i don't see that at all like ding dong i'm ready to come back no real that's i don't know why that's where my head went but now that it's there i'm like maybe it's time to bring back lisa vanderpump i'm ready as a former hater i hater ready i also think it's worth noting that i don't think lisa's relationship with the network is done like I do think she'll still be at events Bravo kind of thing she'll be on Watch What Happens Live it's just like a celebrity I think like they they keep they weirdly keep some people like close like Teddy Mellencamp was just on Watch What Happens Live granted she came with her dad John Cougar Mellencamp but still like she is she's been on since multiple times since she was let go so they keep certain people like in the fold like even how all the shots of Sunset were at BravoCon and their show was canceled like I think Lisa will still be like a friend of the network yeah in a way that not everyone is but that's also because she's just a celebrity right but also now it's interesting like where does lisa rinna's career go from here because you know housewives i think really gave her like a new wave in her career she was this like kind of like a relevant like not i don't like to use the term washed up but like in terms of her acting career yeah like it wasn't paying the bills and keeping the mansion in malibu afloat and i think housewives money wise and fame wise like really in reinvigorated her career and i'm curious what she does with that now i think she might manage her daughters and just be like a professional momager yeah and she'll like vibes. go to all the yeah just be like chris yeah and then and like an influencer go to everything with them that's interesting i like that i think that'd be good for her yeah that's my guess interesting but your guess is as good as mine but she'll, well, in terms she'll of the do ding something because she's a worker bee. Yeah, she's a hustle, hustle, hustle. In terms of ding dong, I am open to the interpretation that perhaps it's a ding dong like a bell. I didn't think about a doorbell, but I don't know. I'm not getting behind the meaning of like her ready to come back. But like if it was a doorbell, what else could it mean? Like ding dong. No, I'm sorry. It's totally ding dong the witch is dead. Like let's not waste our time. I'm just saying that's where my head went and I just thought I would share no i'm glad you did because my like literally didn't even go there and that's definitely like an obvious reference yeah so it's bittersweet the news no i know like even though i was so anti rinna and i was like very much here for like kathy winning i've cooled off no and something about her leaving it's like well ugh, like she's the worst but she makes the show great yeah and I had cool, like, like something my, about it is my not is not satiating. My strong me. feelings had cooled off. I didn't need this news now. I could have gone into another season and with you know Tabula Rasa. I completely agree. Like it's too much time has passed. Now she kind of looks like the victim. <laughs> Damn, how the tables yeah. have turned. It's so true. Are you ready for our next story? Mm -hmm. Because it's some really wonderful news after um, news that we shared earlier this week about Damar Hamlin. He has begun to awaken. He's moving his hands and feet, doctors say. Buffalo Bill safety Damar Hamlin is beginning to awaken as he shows, quote, substantial improvement in his recovery from going into cardiac arrest and collapsing on the field during Monday's game. Doctors at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center said on Thursday. One of the doctors said Hamlin is still considered critically ill and that significant progress is needed. Hamlin's neurological condition appears to be intact, the doctor said. Fabulous. He said he's able to move his hands and feet and he is unable to speak but was able to communicate in writing. They said hmm. that... I wonder why he can't speak. I don't know. Maybe because of some of the stuff they've got Right. going on um like maybe he has like a tube i don't could yeah. be just like logistic like that um right it is said that he asked whether the bills won monday night's game against the Bengals. um and then the doctor responded quote the answer is yes damar you won you won the game of life so everyone is like sharing this like so cute um i just want to say like i'm so happy damar hamlin hopefully will be okay that he's awake it was so i was talking I, about it on good guys and and josh was like really putting into perspective like the odds of this happening like for this sort, sort of condition to happen it's like your heart has to be pumping at the exact moment uh, that it hits something like it was so rare well, we don't know what um, the exact thing that happened was like people are speculating there's this like really um rare heart 
disease that starts with a C that people are saying like that's what it was. Something come up. Yeah, comocorditis. Yeah, but no doctor has confirmed that. Oh, I thought it was like confirmed. That's what it was. I haven't seen a confirmation. I'm just seeing like Got people it. speculating. Um, so I'm so, and like I feel like people in sports and pop culture and just all of the world have like really come together to rally around him. The money that was raised is incredible. Um, but I am not 100% believing that the first thing he said was, did we win the game? I'm sure eventually once he came to and what happened and where's my mom? Like I'm sure after that he's like, oh wait, did we win that game? But this like the first thing he said, I don't believe it. I know. I feel like it's just a really nice story. And this is something I think the yeah. whole country has just been on edge the last few days. And so it's a nice anecdote, especially the doctor saying you won the game of life. Like it's giving Hallmark movie. Yeah, but it's it's giving like a little not believable. <laughs> yeah, no, like it's sweet. And I love that they're giving us like a storybook ending. Um and I'm sure at one point after he woke up, he asked, whatever happened with the game? Yeah. It's natural. But when you experience like a major medical trauma and you're in a coma, like you're resuscitated, like you don't remember certain things. I, I just don't believe the first thing he wrote down, did we win? Yeah, they didn't say it was the first thing. They said they wo that he woke up and he asked, did we win? That doesn't mean that it was the first. But they're definitely pushing forth this like really sweet story that I just don't find entirely true. Belie like believable no, in the way that they've shared it. Because here are a list of things that he probably said before he asked. Where am I? What happened? What happened? Who are you? Why does my chest hurt? Where's my family? What day is it? Yeah. A million things. Yeah. So it's nice and it is nice and I'm not trying to be negative and I and I just want to say like Damar Hamlin has my full love and support. Oh. Like I didn't the way I, the way I didn't know who this man was before and now like I will be following him and like I love the Bills. But let's be real with one another. He he said it maybe a couple hours later. Yeah. Also, it's not like he's the one who's telling the press and the media that that this was the conversation. Like someone no, else no. is like writing this story. No, this like PR department for the Bills. Like, yeah, it's like they, yeah, no. they really, I think they want to inspire people and uplift people. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But I think it's only half true. I agree. I'm so glad that he is up. I hope he makes like a speedy, fast, easy recovery. And I'm just wishing him the best. I really am. Agree. But I do think he has a long road ahead of him because they're still saying critically yeah. ill. But the fact that I think neurologically, right. it seems as though he is doing well is, is extremely That's important. Huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is some great news to head into the weekend after what was really a harrowing Agreed. week and a harrowing start Agreed. to the week and the new year. Agreed. Agreed. So you agree or no? I would say I'm kind of in agreement with you. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure though. We'll circle back. We'll circle back for sure. I'm in agreement there as well. Are you ready for our next story? I'm so agreeable today. You are. You're always agreeable. Oh, yeah, that's what people say about me. They say, that Claudia, she's so agreeable. Never talks back. Never. Never is a contrarian. Never is contentious. No. Oh, not McClurdia. Not my McClurdia, Laturdia, Shahurdia. Not the Arizona McClurdials. Uh, I'm wishing them the best in their game this week. <laughs> Are they a football team or a baseball team? Such good questions you ask. I'm fairly certain it's the St. Louis Cardinals. St. Louis? No, St. Louis. Cardinals. And I only know that because it's Andy Cohen's favorite team. The word, I'm sorry, the name Louis, Louis, is literally going to be the death of you. <laughs> it's so true. Louis from One Direction? No, Louis. No. Nope. Louis? Louis. Louis Judice. Yep. St. St. Louis. No. Nope. No. Nope. Meet me in St. Louis. No, that the movie Sex in the City fucked up that movie. Louise that city from St. Louis. Louis. Is it ever pronounced Louis? I feel like when it's spelled L E W I S. Wait, what do you mean? It's always pronounced Louis. Louis. Louis Vuitton? You ever call it Louis Vuitton? No, but Louis Vuitton is Italian. I live in America, bitch, okay? It's Louis. For what, St. Louis? St. Louis, stop saying St. Louis. Let's just Google it. 
and uh, also like I a lot of a lot of you know American places are named after European places. But maybe a we change the pronunciation with our accents. How to say St. Louis? It's St. Louis. I've been there. St. Louis. Louis. Oh. Missouri. That's, Why is he French? That's going to confuse me more. It's St. Louis. It's Louis Tomlinson. You're, and it's Louis. Louis Capaldi. Louis Capaldi, my fave. I think we but Louis honestly, Capaldi is E W I S. My brain can't handle this conversation. Moving on. Yeah, that's just going to be one of those what's, things that is never solved for me. What story is this? Number three. Okay, we still have time. Still no Jen Shaw. I keep checking. Okay, well we have a fifth story back up just in case. Okay. Victoria Beckham is defending her son Brooklyn after his cooking video is dividing fans. Oh my god! Not like. The way the chokehold that Brooklyn Beckham's fake culinary career has on our culture is something that brings me immense joy. Yeah, so Brooklyn is under fire again for some of his cooking. He showed- For cosplaying and appropriating as a chef. No, that's not why. Um, he did oh. a video where he was joined by Michelin, former Michelin chef Kevin Lee, and they took on the pr traditional British Sunday roast, but with a twist. He showed fans the ingredients used to create the meal, and he treated fans to a sneak peek of the end result. But to his surprise, the video didn't go over too well with fans who said the meat looked raw and undone. One critic joked that the meat, a good vet could bring the meat back to life. Like he's holding huh? a slab of meat that looks completely raw, and he, said and he says that's the finished product. That that's the finished product. So Jackie, maybe it was that technique people are doing where they like have like huge errors in their videos in order to create engagement. Like how you always say when your mic flag is turned upside down, we get so many comments that it's upside down and engagement is engaged. Right. People, that's what people do, especially on the talk. No, and I've been seeing, ever since you pointed it out for me, I've been seeing it everywhere. Like, you know, the luggage company base. Yes. Over the holidays, they had this, um, it was a paid ad. So like when you would scroll through TikTok, you would see base. And it was like showing you how to wrap the base travel bag, like this duffel bag for the holidays if you got it for someone. And they wrapped it like shit. Like literally like the ugliest fucking wrapping of all time. But like it looked like it was serious up until the end. And the comments were like, oh, someone's getting fired. And I think it was on purpose. Yeah, no, I've seen that a lot recently. Like we were talking about, I guess Emily Mariko made a pie that was like really jiggly. Disgusting. And then one of my friends was saying that they think that she did it like to, to provoke people and get Generate. engagement. Also, um, then I fell for this like for literally years. But Abby Hebert and how she says on her Instagram that she's cousins with Noah Beck. I literally yeah. thought until last week that they were cousins. That's a thing people do on TikTok. They're like, oh, I'm here with my stepbrother. And then it's like another TikToker. And all the comments are like, wait, I missed a chapter. But <laughs> it's just a way to create engagement i just took it at face value and then also she also calls her daughter you're too honest for this life she calls her daughter she's like my 20 month old daughter on tiktok or on reels and you know that like really mm. bothers people when people yeah. talk about their kids like that so for that one i actually don't think she's no, like fucking no but with now us. that you told me <laughs> that she said no becks her cousin and he's not like i know she's fucking with us like there is a girl on TikTok. I don't follow her, but she does like mom content, like breastfeeding. She like always comes up and she, she talks about her kid and she says her kid's name is Poot. Yeah, that's Abby. No, it's a different girl. No, she calls her daughter Poot. Uh, maybe I'm getting my mom talkers confused. Okay, she does Poot, but then another girl like says her her daughter's name is like Robert or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> just, and I think she doesn't want to share her kid's name, but like also to create like fodder for people to discuss. It's really smart. We got to start doing wacky shit. Like every time you pronounce like the car company Hyundai, don't correct me. No, correct you. No, oh, yeah, you don't correct me. Yeah, yeah. We got to start being more clickbaity. Like I'm sorry, we have built a brand off of honesty and authenticity, and look where it's gotten us. Not no where we should be. Agree. Except we're number three I'm in start. comedy. Oh, so yeah. much for honesty. The podcast charts. Yeah. Yeah, our first episode yeah. back hit number three on the comedy podcast charts. And usually we peak at like five or six. So every time we like, if we even hit four, we're like, oh my God. So three mm -hmm. was like really big, especially considering it's not like, wasn't our first episode ever. No, and it would it, we really should should have been in number two, but I guess people found the episode about the tragic <laughs> murder of someone named Pamela so funny 
that they were number two. And I'm glad people are finding murder funny. Claude, true crime girlies are not fucking okay. No, they're not. I have so many things to say about that. But the first thing I will say is that you can't judge that until- A podcast I've never you, listened you to. You have to listen to it. I know. I just think optically for their brand, they should be removed from the comedy <laughs> section. One, because then we would move up in the charts. And two, like, I don't think that's what they would want to put forward. People thinking that these girls think crime is funny. There's nothing funny about crime. Just ask Jen Shaw. Okay, that's not even a good reference because there's difference between like, you know, swindling people and right. murder. Jackie, forgive me for just trying to be topical. Like Murder? No, for sure. There's nothing funny about crime. Just ask, you know, a victim of any crime. That's really poignant powerful um but you have to listen to the podcast to understand what they're doing there and how it could be in comedy no i'm sure i would giggle but i just still think if you're going to get into the true crime space and you're going to be the leader of it like you definitely have like an ethical responsibility to like not commercialize it and like still be respectful and i'm sure that they do and i've heard that like a lot of the big true crime podcasts you know give back they work with the families yada yada i just think like you know this shouldn't be in comedy it's a little disrespectful that's all i'm saying even if it is a funny show yeah but maybe they have a reason for being in comedy that's like you know i think the reason is probably that they're funny girls and i love f funny girls okay but it reminded me because in the book the it but i'm just sorry i'm also just selfishly like get out of the get out the of the way genre so i can move my ass up yeah. that's why i just want to be perfectly clear about my intentions yeah but in the book we just read for the redheads the it girl it's like about a crime obviously and she's one of um she was like the best friend of the person who was murdered and she talks about like the impact all these podcasts have and how she like fucking um, hates them of course yeah they're just like so invasive and they just like require you to like live through it again and again again but that's just one fictional girl's perspective so true but not doesn't make it any less important that she doesn't exist. This would actually be a great segue into our next story, except that we didn't finish talking about this story. What was the story? Victoria Beckham is defending Brooklyn. Oh, so what did she say? So she said, it's rare people, not raw. Okay, go off queen. Um, the way this is so inconsequential to like the things going on in the world. <laughs> and... <laughs> I can't even muster up a response like I don't like I don't fucking care like yeah I mean Brooklyn there's people that are but like dying. Brooklyn didn't do this you know it's the right. people who are constantly coming for him mm -hmm. I, I he kind of like really puts himself in these unfortunate situations yeah um with the cooking with the cooking he's also like textbook nepo baby I was just, you literally took the words out of my mouth. And now I'm realizing, we did it on the Patreon. So if you guys haven't listened, we recapped that whole Nepo Baby article. I don't believe the Beckhams were included in that. Yeah, and so, but I also feel like it's and because- And Nicola. I, I also feel like they weren't included in that because aside from him like cosplaying as a chef, like it's not like he's tried to Flop. work in the industry and got jobs because of who his parents were. Like we're just following him because he's a kid of David and Victoria. That's actually so true. And if it weren't for him trying to like break into the culinary field, like he really isn't a Nepo baby. Like he doesn't, he's famous because his parents are famous, but you're right. He's not in the industry at all. Nicola is a Nepo, but she's in the industry. She like directs and acts and. Yes. And she has no, she has no right to like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So then when they have kids, what's that? Nepo to the third? It's grand nepotism. Grand. Yeah. But it's like not just your grandparents being stars, your parents being right you're a second generation nepo, nepo baby yeah yeah that's like um billy lord exactly and from what i learned from the article was like a lot of people had like grandparents yeah because well because they're it like it just keeps going you know yeah the offspring of nepo babies are still nepo babies and they're like the parents were successful because they're nepo then they can't have the kid yeah blah 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 it's a vicious yeah. cycle Anyways, yeah. um, it was raw, rare, not raw. Do it that way, you will. But I'm just, I'm know. glad to see that Victoria is still like defending him, even though there's so much trouble in paradise. A mother's love, mother's love knows no bounds. Not thing like a toxic mother-in-law. So true. She's got. I would. She's got my respect. I would pay 
big bucks to really know what's going on with that family. Like it intrigues me to the nth degree. Yeah. I'm sure. And we'll never know. Maybe you could find out. Someone, maybe oh, someone yeah. will like could, DM you something. You could ask Dumois what she knows. Maybe I'll ask around when I'm in LA, like just people on the street. I'll be one of those street interviewers. What do you know about Nicola and the Peltz family? Yeah, Peltz Beckham. Okay, Peltz Beckham. Our next story, something that we have Is this fourth? It's a fourth. I'm moving as slowly as possible. I know, I'm sorry. Is it the fourth story that's brought to you by uh, Perfect Bar? Yes. Are you looking for a delicious and nutritious snack? Well, look no further than Perfect Bar. With their lineup of fresh from the fridge protein bars, Perfect Bar is exactly what you and your family need. Made with freshly ground nut butter, organic honey, and 20 organic superfoods, Perfect Bar has a variety of products like protein bars and little snack size bars too that are all so good and good for you. You are sure to find a flavor that you love. My personal favorite, and you guys know I'm a picky eater, but I love the dark chocolate chip peanut butter that has a little sprinkle of sea salt. It is perfection. It is delicious, delicious and has become my go-to. I'm actually taking one from the studio, throwing it in my purse, for my flight because it's a long flight and I got to stay full. They have a cookie dough texture. It's creamy and full of flavor and they're unlike any other bars out there. They now come in snack size. They're packed with up to six grams of protein and 150 calories. A little goes a long way with these bars. Perfect Bar knows that it'll be love at first bite. So for a limited time, they're offering you a chance to try their refrigerated protein bars for free. Here's how it works. Sign up for email or text and upload a picture of your receipt from your local grocery store and they'll reimburse you for the cost of one bar. It'll go directly into your Venmo or your PayPal account, which is pretty cool. All you have to do is go to perfectsnacks.com slash toast to get a free perfect bar today that's perfectsnacks.com slash t-o-a-s-t to get a free perfect bar today happy snacking enjoy a protein bar that's in the fridge because its ingredients are fresh and that just makes sense Today's episode is also brought to you by Rocket Money. Say goodbye to last year's outdated, disorganized methods of managing your money and say hello to Rocket Money, the better way to hack your finances in 2023. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, like that streaming service you bought to watch just one show on, or that free trial that you never even used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you, so you can stop paying for the ones that you don't want. With the new year being here, I feel like a lot of people's resolutions is to be like more financially healthy and get their finances in order, and having an app like Rocket Money is so helpful, especially from a subscription standpoint. Like you don't even know how many, like how you easily just like autofill your credit card on all these things and you never realize like that you've been charged like $2 a month for a year. It's so dumb. Let Rocket Money help you. Over 3, 3 million people have used Rocket Money and the average person saves up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash toast. That's rocket, R-O-C-K-E-T, money dot com slash toast rocketmoney.com slash t-o-a-s-t they make canceling subscriptions as easy as the, in the click of a button simply find the subscription you don't want press cancel and rocket money will do all the work in canceling it for you there's no long hold times with customer service and tedious emailing back and forth check it out great thank you so much mcclard you're welcome okay our next story is something that is taking the nation by storm we have not spoken about this yet but you know it's a friday oh. so we have the time to delve into this and things are really we're starting to get information so the idaho murders that took place uh late last year the suspected killer had been arrested on december 30th and charged with four counts of murder in connection with the stabbing deaths of four university of idaho students and yesterday the affidavit was made public of what evidence they had to arrest this guy so the shocking killings of four university of idaho students left the town of moscow idaho on edge for nearly seven weeks while authorities searched for a killer on Friday, after remaining tight-lipped over the course of the initial investigation, authorities announced that Brian Koberger, 28, was arrested in Pennsylvania and charged with four counts of murder and one count of felony burglary in connection with the stabbing deaths of Madison Mogan, Taylor Gunclavis, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. On January 3rd, Koberger waived his extradition and he was transported to Idaho on January 4th. His preliminary hearing, where he will enter a plea to ch the charges against him, is scheduled for January 12th. 
Now that he is back in Idaho, the probable cause affidavit has been released, shedding light on what led investigators to arrest Koberger. So this is so interesting because for literally seven weeks, actually until they arrested him, like it felt like they were they had nothing. I was following this. Oh well, if the detectives on TikTok had solved it already. That's part of the reason I haven't really spoken about this, and this is my general sentiment towards true crime, especially as it happens in real time, like Gabby Petito. The way people are so fucking out of control on social media like it's so disrespectful like when you see pictures of these like four young kids who died it's like it's so sad these are college kids who are just regular kids and i think the way the internet handles like true crime is so inappropriate and so disrespectful and like that's why a lot of times like i don't keep up with these cases because it's very difficult to see people being so blatantly disrespectful when like literally a young person has died four yeah agreed um i think that the sheriffs what it seemed like for seven weeks that they didn't really have any leads i feel like they were being extremely tight-lipped this is just some of the theories that i've seen so that like nothing leaked and that the, and that he had no idea that they were on to him i even think that yeah so there was we know now what led to his arrest according to the affidavit which has been reviewed by people magazine a sheath of the knife so like the cover of the like when you have a knife like you put a cover on it yeah a sheath of the knife used in the stabbings was left at the scene in the bed where mogan and goncalves were found deceased this is where detectives found dna linking coburger according to the affidavit agents took trash from his parents home in pennsylvania to test for a dna match the documents allege also according to the affidavit one of the surviving roommates said they saw the killer dressed in the affidavit as quote a figure clad in black clothing and a mask who walked past her as he left the crime scene and she heard crying on the night of the killings he was linked to the crime scene from dna and cell phone pings the affidavit alleged so alleged so they also had this car that was like seen leaving the area of the crime scene that night and they like traced camera footage to get the license plate so i think that's what started it they traced the license plate to him then they got trash from his parents house and you can collect dna off of trash because it's forfeited property i just i this is so baller the way the uh, the idaho police department handled this like with not a peep being leaked to the media going to pennsylvania going through the trash like this is such good police work like yeshar kawah to the police like this is a like really incredible in getting like a fucking delirious psychotic killer psychotic violent killer like not shooting stabbing like violent evil fucking twisted shithead this is Yeshar Koach. I don't know what the English translation for Yeshar Koach is. Good like, job, job, well, job done. well done, but like hardier than that. He also was a right. student studying criminal justice and criminology. It's also still unclear what the connection is, if any, between him and these students. And I'm sure more will come out over the trial. And as we learn more, this is just like the first bit of information that we've received. But also, did you see that? So he was driving with his dad in the car to pennsylvania and he was stopped twice on the way like uh traffic yes stops. i saw body cam footage body, and those i at first i think people we all thought like oh what a coincidence and they have like this stuff right. when he was on the run but those were like coordinated to get images of his hands from the traffic stops so they were like this tailing like- him until they had the evidence that they needed to arrest him this is um it's just amazing police work like it's so it's like you know you see csi and svu and then you learn from actual law enforcement like it's never like that you know it takes it takes months to get a f- fingerprint and this is some real like csi magic like it's so it's so brilliant it's so amazing and it they're, it's, they're doing such a like a service to the families of these kids i do have questions like i don't understand the connection between brian and, and these kids and nobody does but how do you go into a house with six people with the intent to stab four of them and then he left do you do not see the other two he, yeah so two were still alive one of them saw him it's unclear if he saw her and left her alive and if he did why did he do that also that other student roommate who saw him like didn't call the police for several hours i think people are really confused by that too um I'm sure we'll learn more. Yeah. And I don't want to, no. I, I don't want to jump to any conclusions. No. I'm sure this the, person is traumatized beyond belief. Beyond. No, I definitely, I saw the, I think it was like eight hours, like a long yeah. time was wait before the police was, was called. And I was definitely like, oh, that's interesting. My gut, in, my initial reaction is not to uh, blame her. Her, literally her entire house of friends was just stabbed. Like, 
I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation and I look forward to hearing it. Yeah. Also, then they have like cell phone pings that they like now that once he became the prime suspect, like then other things started to fall into line. So like he turned his phone off at the time of the murder so that his phone couldn't be traced to cell phone towers, which is like something a criminal justice student would probably would know. know to do. But then his phone was seen in the area again that next morning, like five hours later at 9 a.m. I don't know if he like left something. He went back to the scene of the crime. And then he probably wanted to see like what was up. I also I like started following a Instagram account that's just like updating us on the story. Um, Abbott Davids are typically like pretty um, all of the like basic evidence that was needed to arrest this person. But then like there will be more because now that they they are yeah. like, like then they can look into his social media. They can look into they can do a whole thing. Um, but this is the the big stuff of how they led to him, which I, I do think is pretty incredible it's incredible um this is such a terrible story and i think i always just get like so like grossed out when certain cases i don't know what it is about like gabby petito because stuff like this happens all the time but like certain cases like catch the attention of the nation and i think the way people behave is like sometimes really abhorrent and disrespectful so um it's just like a really it's a terrible story just for you know college kids like young kids who are like their whole lives are ahead of them stabbed in their house in their sleep like it's it's fucking terrible and i literally i wish the worst for this man i i hate this man yeah it's horrible for their families i think it's I, terrible it's very difficult to go through like obviously a tragedy grief and then the added element of like people on social media like literally coming to your house like stop oh yeah of course but i think also now being able to have a suspect and there's less it's of huge just, like what happened here because for so many weeks it, it felt like there was no leads i think it's it's huge and i just majorly hope that justice is served me too um fuck this man like every which way yeah are you ready for our fifth and final story, which is looking like it won't be Jen Shah's sentencing? Nope, nothing. Okay. Well, the same, but different. Nicole Kidman is set to star in Yellowstone Creator's upcoming CIA drama, Lioness. So Nicole Kidman... Okay, wait. That was a mouthful. Nicole Kidman is working with Tyler Sheridan. Taylor? Right. Tyler? On Paramount Plus's upcoming CIA drama called Lioness. So it's not part of the Yellowstone family. Okay. But we love ourselves a little Taylor Sheridan and so does Nicole Kidman apparently. She is going to be producing on the project which she was to begin with but now she's also set to star in the series. It is, I feel like this came about because like her and Keith Urban probably just like really like Yellowstone. Yeah so she just like was probably at a dinner party with the man that she respected. Yeah. How can we work together? First it was like oh we'll produce and then maybe they needed a lead character and it's like well you're the kind of the greatest actress I know totally maybe and then maybe you could play caitlin mead the veteran cia senior supervisor who struggles with her personal and professional life balance as well as mentoring someone who is eerily following in her same steps and now maybe like next season like keith urban has like a very brief stint on yellowstone you know this season they had lady wilson and zach bryan more like un not unknown but like still up and comers but if they had keith urban like that'd be pretty sick yeah that would be really sick let's hold out hope just an idea but in the meantime i love this yeah i feel like everything thus far we have seen from taylor sheridan is nothing less than gorgeous and nicole kidman putting her stamp of approval on something like you know her last couple of shows the undoing i didn't like it nine perfect strangers but people did uh big little lies like she really she kills it in the tv space yeah did you finish nine perfect strangers no Me neither I couldn't even make it past episode so one. So bad, Masha. Maybe I think I think episode two is when we actually meet Nicole Kidman, and the second I heard her accent, I turned it off. It was so bad. No, thank you. No, thank you. Um, but what I'm saying is, like, these two are pretty much like guaranteed to make good shit. Yeah, he has a really cult following. So does she. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in the Venn diagram. I'll be watching this. Yeah, no, it's definitely not the collab you would have expected. Yeah. But it's the one we got. And nonetheless, I'm thrilled. Ditto. And then I don't know that any of his shows really get nominated for the big accolades. Is Yellowstone, never? Not in the way that you would think. Maybe they finally got nominated, but they've never swept. Like, it's the show the whole country's watching. And like, they, it, it, the award shows don't reflect that. Right. But I feel like with her, 
They yes. love her. Maybe this is his way of like kind of getting his foot in the door with like Hollywood elite. Yeah. Because he's like a down home country boy. Yeah, but this could be the show that gets him those nominations. What's Taylor Sheridan's like personal life like? I think that he is a cowboy. I don't know. I'm sorry. Is he married? He is married. And that, and his wife is who Beth is based on. Apparently she's like a fast talking queen like Beth. Stop. Yeah. That's so cute. It's really cute. What's his wife's name? Um, I think her name is Nicole. Yeah, Nicole. Nicole Muirbrook. They're married since 2013 and she's absolutely gorgeous. And what does she do for work? Like, is she in the industry? She, um, she has an impressive career of her own, says Hollywood Life. And that career is that she is a model and an actress. Nice. Has she ever been in Yellowstone? No, I don't think so. Her first gig was on How I Met Your Mother. She also played a role in the film The Human Contract. She was in the TV. Did she have like a big role on How I Met Your Mother or like an extra? They don't say. Hollywood Life didn't say. Mm. Interesting. Well, seems as though, you know, your wife is an actress. You have a number one show in the country. You put yourself on your show all the time, Travis. Right. She's also an equestrian and competes in Ah. in cutting competitions, including the 2020 Carity Foundation Celebrity Cutting Event, where she received top honors. So she is a cowgirl, too. No, it's so authentic. That's why the show is so good. Yeah. So I think he's immensely inspired by her. And that's why Beth is so awesome. That's great. I loved it. I love that. Me too. Art imitating life. Well, we are at the end of the show. Still no Jen Shaw news. So the I'm sure the verdict will come the moment the show mm-hmm. ends. But that just means we have something to talk about on Monday when I'm in L.A. I love L.A. So a reminder, if you're on the West Coast perfect because we're going to be recording on west coast time if you're on the east coast episodes will be out later next week that's the price you pay when you're a fabulous starlet in hollywood you know young hollywood queen totally they'll probably be out an hour later than usual so not we we're we're still recording earlier i'm waking up early we're recording earlier than usual but like within you know reason for mcclurd girls gotta sleep so just bear with us while i it'll probably be an hour an hour and a half later than it's usually up but it's been a great week. It's been so good to be back. I have enjoyed this immensely. Thank you guys for being so excited about the toast coming back. It feels good to, you know, be missed. not n- to be missed and to, to not feel like, you know, it's like an echo chamber. You know, there are people listening. It's nice. Yes, yeah, they are. So hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Do something special yeah. for yourself. But sometimes. Do something for you. Sometimes self-care looks like hard work, but maybe not this weekend. Maybe not. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Toast the Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give us a video thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, I Radio, Castbox, all the places we've listened to podcasts. Find us at the Toast the Five Story. Be better, beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. Hope you guys have an incredible weekend and we will see you in LA on Monday. Bye. We love LA and we love you. Bye.